Welcome back to Citizen Nerd. I am Nathan. Today we're going to look at a couple of the ways that I do uh, uh, pad sounds with a band at my church. And what we do is I take a synthesizer or, or such and then add in main stage. So we'll look at the way that we can do that with two of the old classic synthesizers that I have. So let's get started. Okay, we'll start here with uh, running main stage uh, that's set to infinity pad and uh, with the DX7 set the e-piano sound. So these two mix actually quite well together and I think they sound quite lovely. Okay, now we'll just give you an idea of what the DX7 itself running the, you know, the e-piano sound with just simply chorus and verb turned onto it because honestly I think you would always use that uh, by itself doing the same kind of setup. Okay, and now we'll do main stage with the same infinity pad with the Roland D50 uh, as a MIDI controller. So it's just kind of doing, so you get an idea of just how well it works doing the same kind of thing. Okay, and now we'll run the uh, Roland D50 with the main stage patch set to Infinity Pad, same thing. Uh, and then we'll use the C37 soundtrack, which has a really nice kind of like flow in with this. I th I've, I've used this a couple times, and uh, that and the e-piano sound uh, off the DX7 live. And it really does sound nice, especially when you're doing some more quieter music and such like that. It's a really great pad. Okay, now we're going to run the D50 using a patch on it off the card, called, uh, which is C47, called Spacious Sweep. And we're going to run main stage running 80 synth uh, pat, or patch, rather. So it kind of has more of a, um, um, like a fill-in area. It would almost be a good lead for a few things. Uh, here we go.
Hey everyone, it's Nathan Beck. I just want to do a close out to this video uh, on what I do with my DX7 here along with main stage, which you can see on my other camera here, which is overhead, it's up here. <laughs> and a couple things to note. Uh, one, uh, use a good MIDI uh, to USB adapter. I bought this thing about oh, a year or so ago off, uh, let's get a picture of it there. Bought that one off um, eBay. And if you go and you Google it cheap, it's like $6. If you go and you Google or just you know look on YouTube for like uh, the fixes to these little cheap ones because they don't work, um, yeah, save your money. I know it's six bucks, but it's a bad one. You don't want it. Um, I wind up buying a Roland unit, which is kind of hiding down here a little bit. I'll show it to you here. But it's a UM1, like you can see that. Um, USB MIDI interface UM1. It's actually the Mark II version. Perfect. It works every time. So, and a good example here. So I'll turn the volume down on this, and you can hear you know, the pad playing in the background. And I'm going to have to use headphones to hear it because I don't have the, P, the PA. This is actually my normal setup at church, not, not this. I did this because I'm just demonstrating how I kind of want to make everything fit. Um, but this kind of gives an idea. So to integrate this whole thing, right now I typically use, this is my FA-08 and this is my XWP-1. The reason I like this one is because, I'll put the headphones on so I can hear here. All right, so typically I'll have, for example, um, some stuff going on here, okay. For example, I'll have like draw bar, so. So I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> you can really hear my chair loud, can't you? Sorry. <laughs> it's squeaky. <laughs> um, for example, that, or you know, maybe on a piano. Just for example. But I want to be able to do that with my DX7 because I have this thing about collecting old keyboards and it's probably insane, but that's okay. Um, but I like these two, and I use these two a lot. And a lot of times I'll use a, uh, instead of using the digital mixer, which is sitting right here, which is my XR18, a lot of times I'll just use this little guy. Um, so you see it right there, I think, at the other camera, which is actually probably upside down. I'm sorry. There we go. That probably looked better. Um, and basically because I only typically have two keyboards going at once, and even if I did, I could do up to four different great just quick inputs. And the XWP1 has this little pad up here that you can set an iPad on. Well, this thing fits perfectly, too. Um, it's got a little lip for it to stay on and everything. I kind of love that. So here's what I wanted to do. If I can not get everything to fall, it would be great. Okay. So I've run everything through my digital mixers because I'm going to record it on Audacity back here, and that's actually what you're hearing me on, the camera audio from this distance. I'm using a uh, um, SM58 mic today uh, here in my face, so... Yeah, <laughs> anyway. So if you're doing, let's bring up, um, <coughs> excuse me. So if we're in main stage, this is a classic pad. Um, just one, I, I've layered a couple things on. And one of the sounds I'm using in this, hilariously, is uh, the Dext, or Dexit, however you want to pronounce, uh, DX7 clone, but I actually prefer to use kind of both at the same time, so I'll bring up, now I'm on my e-piano patch here, and I've got, now, I do have, through the digital mixer, I have a chorus, a reverb, and a delay going, but only for this, it doesn't have anything else, nothing else is touching it or hitting it, just that, so... But that kind of gives you an idea what I want to do. So the last time I had this set up at home in my uh, my little studio sort of thing in the living room, which my kids absolutely love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sarcasm. Um, it takes up gaming room, apparently. But uh, so this is my setup at church. So if you actually go to like, I, I play for my church with River's Edge uh, Fellowship Church, REFC. 
Uh, if you go on, on Facebook, we stream Facebook Live, so you can actually see my little setup here normally. This is not here normally. Uh, occasionally, I have swapped out the FA08 just because of sheer size to move the thing and brought this one in and then hooked up my main stage rig sitting typically here as opposed to the, you know in, in connection with those. But this is how I wanted to do it today So, because I wanted to kind of demonstrate. I also picked up a Korg uh, nano controller. So if I, let me bring up my in main stage here. Um, I'll open up my B3 sound. I think I've got that in there. There it is. I think that's actually the right one. If I'm doing this with this controller, you see I've mapped all these. I still got to kind of tighten this thing down. I just move it over top of this because I'm not going to use any of that right now. So you can see how that's moving in there. All right, I've got all these effectively there. And I've got the volume control there. I put it on a potentiometer. And well, these are all potentiometers, the slider potentiometers. But anyway, so I've got that and I've got my percussion, which I don't have perfectly right, but but I do have the rotary going. So we could set that up really simply like that. We can have, you know, I'm using my DX7 as a MIDI controller at this point. So, but I like it because it has a couple things. One, it has aftertouch, which I, three of my keyboards do have aftertouch. So I really can't, it was not my first one with aftertouch. My first one was actually my D50, um, which is another one I like using. And, and you'll see it, you see it in the previous parts of the video here. Also, uh, another, I, just before I bought this one, I bought the, Casio CZ1 also has aftertouch, and aftertouch is fun. So it's not necessarily as usable as you'd like, but it is actually kind of fun. So. Anyway, so that's kind of how this works with the MIDI. So I've been using the Roland adapter to run the, to come out of the MIDI from my DX7. And then I have this thing I picked up. I think these are on eBay right now. I found this one for, I want to say $30, $35. And it gives me all my sliders. A lot. You can, of course, use this thing to run. If you're doing main stage for all of your sounds, you can have this thing actually run the volume controls, which are over here in that. I'll see if I shrink that down a little bit. Well, not really, but it's there. So, is it, will it let me? Maybe it will. I'm still kind of getting used to main stage. I'm used to more of just like straight out synthesizers. So getting used to the way this thing is set up and whatnot, it's a little bit different. But of course, I have actually used my both my uh, FA08 and my XWP1 as the controller for my uh, main stage rig. So I'm still trying to get used to that and how that hall is going to kind of integrate with the way I've got everything laid out. But I just wanted to see you, you know, give you a couple ideas on the way you can set this up. If you have an old DX7, you do not have to go out and you can actually use this as your MIDI controller. And then just pick up like a $30 little Korg uh, nano controller too, uh, which is what that is for the, you know, for everything else. So if you're, which I don't have that set right. It's off a little bit, but I'll work on that. I think it's just I got to set to the wrong thing. But you can, of course, go in here and other thing. So if I wanted to do, for example, let me close that one out, and we'll go back into here, and we'll open up. Let's just go to an untitled one, and I'll show you how to create something really quick, which is a lot of fun. So we'll just take the e-piano sound here, which is really loud. <laughs> okay, and it's got a few other things. And that's coming out of my main stage rig. So, um, but if I wanted to do, which is just a preset in there. So if I wanted to create a new one, let's go to file new. And we're going to do this with a synthesizer. Let me get loaded up here. So let's see if I can show you a little bit better what this 
I can bring up the M1. That's too. I actually downloaded the M1 setup for this too. It's just pretty cool. It came with this Korg. If you buy this Korg, it comes with a download set for a ton of stuff. One of which is, let me bring that one up, the Korg M1 LE. And you get the, the Korg M1 setups. So if I go to program, and we go to our input card, and let's do, let's do piano, because that's like the standard ones. Oh, we got a delay inverter going on here. We do not need that, so turn that off. Turn that off. Right. <laughs> so you get the Korg on this becomes a piano. I love that. Never thought this thing, you know, when they created this, they had no idea that we'd ever be able to have this kind of stuff. I mean, they probably desired it at some point. But, but the, uh, yeah, the fun thing you can do with this, like, um, yeah, I love the M1 sounds. I really do. They're awesome. Uh, let's see, where's it at? The, um, da -da -da slap bass. <laughs> that's, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not that I could ever play the, the, the theme for, um, what is it, Seinfeld, but yeah, <laughs> that would be fun. But let's go back to this. Uh, let me turn this one off. We'll go back to uh, uh, what I was initially talking about here. So we'll go to digital, so go to DX7. So this is what the DX7 settings look like. Let me get my little, this little guy out of the way here. Turn height on. Bye bye. There we go. So that's actually like the default settings. So you can go in here and you can change the what the the basic setup for this is. But you can set all you know as you play this, you can see you can watch it kind of go through each one of these little things here, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see if I find one that's. Factory preset. I, I don't like the fact it's not listed, or that it's just called unlisted. <laughs> I don't want you to ever use that for. Um, oh, cart. Is it cart? Yeah, it is cart. Okay, so we'll go to. Let's go. I think it's two. Magic organ, EPO, where's my EPO? There it is, EPO, okay, I'm just blind today. Okay. Okay, so that's Dex, it's, or Dex, however you want to pronounce um, Variation on what that looks like, right? So, load that. the original. I'm going to mute this. Mute. So, we'll say C chord. Right? There's this with the other stuff on it. And then there's that, which of course if you just add chorus and verb and all that stuff, you get pretty close. But that's really close. So there's that. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Just where I'm seated here. So anyway, that's kind of the stuff that you can do a lot with this. I, I, you know, whereas I like some of the initial sounds I can get out of this, so I can layer a few things together. So if I want to keep, uh, let me keep that running. But if I want to add in, let's say the fretless bass, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah, however it goes. Anyway, 
So, but if I want to keep that in here, you know, I'm going to... That's kind of the stuff I've been playing around with trying to get all this running. And then I need to, when I create patches, I need to map my little controller to it all the time. But that's okay, because that's also something that's easy enough to do. A couple things real quick that got brought up. And I think I probably really will try and do this. Uh, I might work on that actually today a little bit after I get done making this and finishing this one up. Because I'm trying to get some of these videos out. But uh, is to do some adjustments to the settings to show how they react. I might do it in decks just so you can see it a little bit more visually because it's right there. But, um, but I, you know, I'll probably do it there and then do it here to prove that, yeah, it does actually work. Um, anyway, I had a couple other people who had, you know, some comments that were put in there that they gave me a couple other ideas to, to try and create some, some content for. So we're gonna work on that a little bit. Um, one of them was on this a little bit and I was gonna show you how to do some of the, in, the interconnects and why I did it that way. Uh, one other person was kind of curious as to why I did the backlight and just the uh, the upgrade to the um, the extended version BIOS, the newest BIOS to this, and not go ahead and do like gray matter or something like that, uh, or one of the other variations. Honestly, it came down to money and not knowing, you know, I, with the way YouTube's doing right now, if, unless you have a thousand viewers and a lot of view or a thousand subscribers rather, and a lot of views they're cutting the ability for you to actually get money uh, until that happens. Well, I'm a small channel, right? I'm just started yet. I, last year was not a good year for me trying to get things done. I apologize for that. There will be more videos coming this year, a lot more videos coming this year. A lot on synthesizers and, and a few other things we'll talk about here in a minute. So really that one came down to money, honestly. Um, it was just what I had and what I could get. And I really just, the backlight was a big thing, but I wanted to be able to actually, sorry about that. I wanted to be able to send MIDI out of this thing. And that's the where they had that issue to where if it's sent, uh, if I can, let me hit a key here. So you say it's a 91, that's 127. It would never do 127 out. So uh, with the old BIOS. So I just really wanted to get that fixed to where it was as close to original as possible with a couple of nice things like the backlight working. Um, and the updated BIOS and everything. So, back to it though. Uh, so this channel, we're gonna I'm gonna continue working on uh, some of my builds uh, with in regards to ham radio and synthesizer stuff like that. Like upgrading this and fixing some keyboards when I get, pick them up and such, and I have playing some things, you know. And then I have another channel coming out soon with a friend of mine, which. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, I think we, we went ahead and we actually picked up some of the stuff. We're going to call it Nerd's Hammer. And that's going to be a cosplay stuff or costume play stuff. And we've already started uh, kind of the planning and everything else for it. So that will be coming out this year as well. So we're opening a second, uh, you know, second channel here uh, connected. And there will be a couple of us doing that. Uh, myself and another guy named Al. So, and uh, we're going to be going with that. But this channel itself will be still going with all the keyboards and with the ham radio stuff and some of the other uh, um, stuff that's more in my, down in my personal alley. I appreciate all the comments that we got off my first uh, DX7 video, the, the why I picked up a DX7 in 2017, this of course 2018 now, um, and a bunch of other reasons. One is just the keyboard I always wanted to have. And I, I love this keyboard, just the feel of it and everything. Um, let me mute that and here we go. I love the sounds of FM and all that kind of stuff. And you can kind of do some of that on the on my FA, FA08 and a little bit on my uh, XWP1. But I had nothing. You know, you just can't simulate, you know. You know, you just can't simulate the real thing perfectly. I mean, it comes close. Dex, it's really close and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's just that, it, you know, here it is. <laughs> Until you pick it up, then you wish they'd really made it out of plastic. But that's it. It, it is not. It is, you know, it is all metal. <laughs> this thing is is really built to take a, a serious beating. Um, anyway, so getting back to that, though, um, 
the way YouTube is doing their stuff, of course, now I'm, I'm really trying to hope that more people will be subscribing to this so I can continue to try and create some real content. Okay, at this point, they're chopping it off at the 20th of this month of February of 2018. And I probably won't make that cut. I'll be honest with you. I have 90, today I have 92 viewers or 92 subscribers rather. Uh, sorry. And a lot of viewers, not, not 92 subscribers. Uh, and I have a couple of videos that have hit uh, four or five, maybe I think one of them 6,500 views or something like that, which that to me, that's good. That's a great start. It's certainly not the million plus that you get on some of these channels, but it's me. And I'm just trying to get started. And this is not my full-time job. I'm an IT person. I have to do that full time. And then I get to do this in the evenings or like today, for example, it's a Sunday afternoon. It's actually Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, but anyway, keep your comments coming. I do read them. I honestly probably will not respond to any of them that are seriously negative. But any ideas, though, or if you have something that says, well, you know, you can actually do this with that and it's a better way to do it. I appreciate those things. I really do. I love the comments that came about with my first DX7 video. Those are awesome. Uh, I tried to respond to them as many of them as I physically could. Uh, I'll try and continue responding to them as, as many of them as I physically can. Um, anyway, but if you have any comments, though, do please, or any ideas, and especially if you think there's something you want to see, put it in the comments. I do read them. They, they also get sent to my email. So, you know, that's awesome. Uh, please subscribe. It really does help us. You know, all the YouTubers out here really do need that these days. I appreciate, you know, everyone who subscribes. And if, you know, you know, and I, you know, I appreciate the likes on the videos. I love the thumbs up. I mean, if you hate the video, I understand that too. That's okay. Uh, still some great thanks to like Woody Piano Shack and like that for, for, you know, having a little blurb of mine out there. I love that. Thank you very much. So anyway, come up pretty soon. We're going to start my other channel. It's going to be uh, done with a friend of mine. We're going to be doing cosplay stuff. We're going to continue on this channel doing synthesizers and builds for uh, like ham radio and stuff like that. I've got a couple other things coming up for how to do some projects with your kids, some simple radio projects that don't have to actually do soldering. I'm going to build the whole thing, make it look kind of pretty, but I'm going to show you how to do some simple things like that. So anyway, you guys have a great one, and uh, hope to see you on the next channel, or the next, uh, yeah, my next channel, <laughs> and hope to see you in the next video, and hope you enjoyed this, and uh, have a great day.